Hi there, in this video I'm going to give you some advice on how to obtain academic sources. In addition to being of real practical value, the literature on the way that people use the internet as a research tool has provided a great deal of impetus to ensure that students get guidance on how to obtain academic sources. The research suggests that more often than not, students use Google as their first port of call in doing their research. This is a great example of what psychologists refer to as cognitive offloading, which is when we use our body or an object in our environment to alter the information processing requirements of a task in such a way that make it less cognitively demanding. Now don't worry, I'm not about to suggest you yank your ethernet cable out of the wall before you start your research. But I am going to suggest that using the standard Google search engine is not the best way to obtain academic sources. And this is because if you use the standard Google search engine, what you'll tend to find is that will prioritise things like encyclopedia entries, Wikipedia being a good example, and other websites that, although popular, may not be the most reliable sources of information. Not surprisingly, research also indicates that if you start using Google as a research tool, you're much more likely to use it again in the future. And thus you might unwittingly start habitually using a non-optimal method of obtaining academic sources. So let's give you a few alternative methods of locating academic sources. The first thing you'll want to do if you're a student at university or college is find out which access management portal your own institution is signed up to. The reason you'll want to do this is knowing which access management portal your institution uses and knowing how to sign up to that portal is the key to opening up a huge volume of things like academic books, journal articles, conference proceedings and so on. To find out which access management portal your own institution uses and how you can go about logging onto that portal, simply contact one of your institutional librarians. So this is the kind of thing you can expect when you use access management software like Open Athens to access databases of academic material. As you can see I've searched for material on prospective memory here and the very first article that's been found by the search engine is indeed an academic journal article and not only that but you can also see that there is an option to download either the HTML full text or the PDF full text immediately under the entry for that journal article. Another advantage to being logged in to an information access management portal such as Open Athens is that if you find a piece of academic material that's behind a paywall, generally speaking, your institutional affiliation will be recognised automatically and you'll be invited to log in via your institution. The management portal will then check to see if your institution has a subscription to that particular academic source, and if so, you'll be allowed to view it. Although using the standard Google search engine to locate academic sources is suboptimal, happily Google does have an alternative search engine that is specialised for academic content. And you can see that on the screen now it's called Google Scholar. And as the name implies, this search engine will prioritise academic sources. So here's an extract from a search that I've just done on Google Scholar for material on cognitive offloading. The great thing about Google Scholar is that in addition to suggesting academic sources that you might like to have a look at, it will also check online to see if copies of those sources are available. And on the right hand side of the screen you can see that for the first three sources that Google has identified, it's also provided a link to a copy of each of those sources in either PDF or HTML format. One thing that can really help you obtain academic sources is to set up your own ResearchGate profile. You can think of ResearchGate as a networking site for researchers. Everyone sets up their own profile which lists things like their institutional affiliation if they have one, their membership of particular research groups, the current areas of research they're interested in, previous research, prior publications, and so on and so forth. 
Once you've set up your profile, you can connect with other researchers that are involved in research you're interested in and receive alerts when they publish new material. Once you've set up your own profile, you can use ResearchGate's database to search for sources on a particular topic or from a particular author or research group. The other great thing about ResearchGate is that in providing details of their previous publications, authors will often upload a copy of those publications to the ResearchGate site that other members can then view and download. You can see an example of this from my profile on the screen at the moment. If you learn of an academic source that you'd like to read but can't obtain a full copy of it, it's always worth immediately looking for the website of the lead author. Most academics will have at the very least an institutional website. You can see mine on the screen at the moment. If you have a look at an academic's web page, it's very likely that part of that web page will be dedicated to their publications. And if you have a look at their publications, it's quite likely that they'll have uploaded a PDF copy of some or all of their prior publications. Or, as in the case of the example on the screen at the moment, at least put HTML links to some of the articles they've written for you to view online. If all other attempts to obtain a source from a particular academic have failed, then as a last resort, you might like to visit that academic's website to determine what their email address is, and then send them a polite email asking them if they'd be prepared to send you a copy of that source. Whenever possible, academics are usually happy to send you a copy of their work. However, please be aware that sometimes this won't be possible owing to things like copyright restrictions. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please do hit the like button. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe to my channel for more advice on how psychology can help you study more effectively. Turn on the notifications if you want to know when I post new content. Thanks very much.